in. They're at the post. There they go. Anami from the outside along with Valerie Valeski Sky factors to the inside. Then it's back to Lizzie's girl and done that as they pass by us now for the first time. Anami on the outside by a neck. But Sky Factor is trying to hold the rail. Length and a half back, Valerie Valeski is four back to Lizzie's girl. Two and a half to done that. Into the clubhouse turn they go, opening quarter, 22 and one. As they run past the half mile mark, it's Sky Factor from the rail with the lead now by a neck. Anami on the outside, second by a length and a half. Valerie Valeski sits in third at the rail. Lizzie's girl fourth, only two and a half from the lead. Done that to trailer. As they head to the 516 marker, it's now Anami taking over. Half 45 and four. And Anami leads it by a length and a half. Valerie Valeski, Lizzie's girl at the rail making headway. Sky Factor in, done that. As they race to the top of the lane, there's Lizzie's girl now driving up the inside to grab the lead. As they turn for home, Lizzie's girl now draws off by two and a half. Anami in second, Valerie Valeski, and done that. But it's Lizzie's girl by five, by six. Lizzie's girl well in the clear. Anami holds second. Valerie Valeski third, done that fourth, Sky Factor. Now we're all set. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. From the center, Texas Humor dancing with Lil. Now trying to knife through between horses. Here comes Just Misty. And at the rail we have Groovy Girl as they go under the line for the first time. Just Misty on the outside, Groovy Girl at the rail. They now vie for the top spot. Two lengths for the back, dancing with Lil. At the rail, Texas Humor. And on the outside, Rose of Texas. As they run to the half mile mark, the opening quarter, 22 and one. As they go by the half mile mark to the back stretch, it's just Misty under a snug hold, leading it by just over a length. Groovy Girl second by just over a length. Texas Humor is third. On the outside, Rose of Texas. Dancing with Lil is the trailer. As they run past the 5.16 marker, the half 46 and one. And Just Misty leads it now by a length and a half. Groovy Girl second by a length and a half. At the rail, it's Texas Humor in third. Rose of Texas on the outside and dancing with Lil. As they turn for home, Just Misty now has built up a three length lead. And down the lane they come. Just Misty is now drawn away by three on the outside. Texas Humor, Groovy Girl trying to hold second, but it will be just Misty to win it. Texas Humor second, Groovy Girl third, Rose of Texas and Dancing with Lil. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Mr. Quality from the center, from the rail now, we have Finding Ways, and the far outside, more than sole title. These three line up and battle for the early supremacy. Under the line for the first time, Finding Ways leads it now by a neck. 
more than sole title up on the outside. It's a length and a half back to Mr. Quality. Big break of about five to Goodbye Putin and Vancouver's Hunter. Opening quarter, 22 and four as they run past the half mile mark. And to the back stretch they go. Finding way shows the way by a little over a length. More than sole title, second by just under two. Mr. Quality sits in third by three and a half. Then Goodbye Putin. By back, Vancouver's Hunter. Past the 5 16th pole they go. The half, 46 and 1. And finding ways from the rail leads it now by a tight length. More than sole title, second by two. Mr. Quality, third by three and a half. Goodbye, Putin skims the rail and will try and make up ground in the stretch drive. And down the lane they come. Finding ways has found more. Opens up by three. Finding ways is well in command. Battles on for second, but it will be finding ways to win it. Goodbye, Putin and Mr. Quality in a photo for second. More than sole title was for. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Queen of Attitude off a step slow. Pretty area put right on the early lead. Driving it up on the outside is Lasting Light. Kick up the dust at the rail, followed by Silk Stilettos. Queen of Attitude, three back in fifth. Under the line for the first time. Pretty area trying to gear the pace down. Leads it by a neck. On the outside, Lasting Light second by a length and a half. Kick up the dust is third, followed by Silk Stilettos in fourth, and Queen of Attitude the trailer, but only five off the lead. As they head for the back stretch, opening quarter 22 and three. As they go down the back stretch, Lasting Light pops a nose in front. At the rail, pretty area, second by two. Then it's kick up the dust. At the rail is Queen of Attitude trying to make headway, and Silk Stilettos. Into the far turn they go, half, 46 and three. Still locked together on the inside, pretty area. On the outside, lasting light. Queen of Attitude creeping closer, but will need a way through and kick up the dust widest of all as they turn for home. Pretty area has the lead. Queen of Attitude trying to skim the rail. Lasting light on the outside and kick up the dust. It's pretty area. Queen of Attitude trying to get to her late. Pretty area hangs on. Queen of Attitude second, Lasting Light third. Kick up the dust and silk stilettos. Perez back aboard. There they go. Brian's delight put right on the early lead. Groove in his back. Asked for speed on the inside is Wicked Knight. Followed by road closure and accordingly as they go under the line for the first time. Driving up the inside. Wicked Knight on the outside. Brian's delight. Road closure's only a length back in third but will be three wide into the turn. As they go into the turn then it's back to Brian's delight. And accordingly, as they run past the half mile marker, opening quarter, 22 and one. From the rail, Wicked Knight by a nose, but road closure has now taken away the lead. Then it's back to Brian's Delight in third. 
Two back is Groove and his back trailer accordingly. Past the 5 16 they go. And road closure now leads it and scampers away by two. The half, 45 and three. And road closure leading it by two and a half. It is Wicked Knight still trying to keep up in second. Three back is Groove and his back on the outside accordingly. And at the rail, Brian's Delight. But as they turn for home, it's road closure by three. And down the lane they come. Road closure. Trying to get it in to him late as Wicked Knight on the outside. Road closure. Wicked Knight accordingly. They're all moving in. It will be very close. It might be accordingly. But it'll be a picture finish right there also. Wicked Knight and Road up and in. Six in. They're at the post. There they go. From the outside, little sister Lee gunned out of there for the early lead. Drill, baby drill right there and Harbor Storm at the rail. It's two lengths back on the outside to Perfect Penny. In between them now, Classy Legacy and at the rail, Okanagan Gold. Having trouble with Harbor Storm as the rider trying to make this one settle down. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Little Sister Lee leads it now by a length and a half. Drill, baby drill, second by a half. Up on the outside is Perfect Penny in third. At the rail, Okanagan Gold is fourth. Then on the outside, Classy Legacy. And Harbor Storm is the trailer, six off the lead. Opening quarter in the dawdling, 23 and 3 as they head towards the 5 16 marker. It is Little Sister Lee, Drill Baby Drill, and Perfect Penny. These are the top three. Then three and a half lengths back now is Okanagan Gold. The half went in 48 and two. Midway on the final turn, and it's Little Sister Lee, Drill Baby Drill, and Perfect Penny to make a line of three. As they turn for home, Little Sister Lee with a short lead. Perfect Penny on the outside, and Drill Baby Drill, Little Sister Lee desperate for the line. Here's Perfect Penny over the top. They hit the wire, they're right together. Perfect Penny on the outside, Little Sister Lee. Drill Baby Drill will be third, and Okanagan Gold fourth. and YVR, Aiden, they're at the post. And there they go. Quickly, it's Back Shack on the early lead. Down towards the inside, gray to go. YVR trying to drive up on the outside, trying to keep him at bay is Rimfire and also Cab Sav. They're four across the track as they go to the clubhouse turn. Back Shack with a short lead. In between runners, Cab Sav. Rim fire right there. And YVR deep on the track. Gray to go sits in fifth. Then Climb to Glory in sixth. Logical Al is seventh. Eight on the outside is Better Tone. As they head down the back stretch, the opening quarter, a sensible 
22 and 3. And Back Shack has the lead now by a tight length. Deep on the track, YVR. Right there, Cab Sav. Also, Rim Fire. Gray to go, saving ground at the rail. Then it's back to Climb to Glory, Logical L, and Better Tone. Half 46 and 1. Three sixteenths from home. They have to come and catch Back Shack. YVR, dead aim on the outside. Gray to go, Rim Fire in a little tight. And down the lane they come. It's Back Shack with the lead. YVR's on the outside. Climb to Glory's closing late. Deep stretch, so Back Shack has pulled away. And Back Shack will win it. Three horse picture for second. Climb to Glory, Gray to go. And YVR all together.
At a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Track announcer Dan Chukic being joined, as usual, by our paddock host and handicapper Mike Heads. We're going to preview all seven on what's turning out to be a pretty nice Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it's starting to warm up a little cooler this morning, uh, a little breeze kicking up, cloud cover, but uh, the clouds have parted and uh, they're... He's coming back. Yeah, it's, pretty, <laughs> it's going to be a pretty nice, nice comfortable day anyway, low 20s at best, but uh, nice... Yeah, seven races today, a couple of you know, good, good Carry races. Carryovers, too. With uh, Sir Bregovic and Bold Arch, that's a good little race, uh, being race number five. But yeah, carryover, almost uh, 5,600 in the pick five. Just under a thousand in the super high five, a few super high five players. So that right. wasn't hit yesterday, as well as the pick five, which is start in race number two. Right. All right, let's get right into the card. Track is fast. We'll start with the opener. Field of five, six and a half furlongs. First half of the double exactor, tri actor wagering. Well, he's off to a hard, hot start. He gets the uh, lightweight apprentice and Fraser Abley. I'm heading to the outside, number seven, Monty. The five, Monty. Yeah. The five, uh, yeah. Monty. I, you know, give this horse a, a decent shot to win. He's going to get to the front. It's just right. a matter of how far he can go because he does. He will be uh, wanting the line in, in the stretch. <laughs> he does get, you know, a little uh, tired late because he has this breakneck speed and he uses it. And he's in light, and uh, I expect the horse to make the lead, build up a big lead. And I don't know if he's going to be able to make it the whole way. We'll see. I, I went to the two, make it or break it. A uh, little easier. I think this is a little easier group than I'm a ch chai to. Last time, that was a bad one to run into. But uh, I think this horse gets a good trip sitting just in behind Monty and uh, might run him down in the last 16th of a mile. And, of course, the four horse I'd be seeing you. Horse is pretty consistent, runs good races all the time, doesn't seem to win very often. but Rallied still, smartly last time. Yeah, a good run. Uh, took advantage of, uh, had a nice trip, but still rallied and got the job done to be second. So that was impressive with Leary Cicheran up, and he'll be back aboard today. I just... Went something different. I don't love anyone in here. I went two, four, five. Uh, I think you need a ball in your doubles. All right. In the open air, Mike's going to head to the two, make it or break it. I'm going to head to the five, Monty. Out of the second race now. It's a field of six to go six and a half. Exactor try, Superfecta, and pick five wagering. Carry over $55.99 dollar wager. Five of five needed. If you miss one, as you always yep. say, throw your Toss ticket it. away. Not, <laughs> no consolations. Just take it. It's a coaster now. Yep, no just, consolations. Uh, use it as a coaster. Uh, the three-horse Rolly Spirit, uh, I thought, ran very well and ran into a well-meant Trapolis for Ryan Biot that day. Right. Uh, this horse battled on the lead. It wasn't a fast pace, but still, uh, Trapolis looped the field. He was eligible to be wavered that day, and I think you'll see Trapolis run for a little more money than what uh, really, that, that was a $4,000 non-two. Uh, I think you'll see him come back in a non-three for eight or something. But uh, Roly Spirit, I thought, ran, it, his, his best races are better than anyone in here. I gotta go Roly Spirit. Uh, but the four horse, Marnie Google, who does get himself acres behind the field early, but does come with a pretty good late run. We'll see if it's good enough today. And I put the one, remember the Alamo. Not Alamo. Sure what did you do with him? Yeah, it was in against straight three year olds last time. Didn't last very long. Uh, I know it was for more money, but once again, there were straight three year olds. He's running against older horses here. So it's, I wouldn't say it's a sideways move, but it's pretty close. It's not as big a drop as it looks like on paper. Right. And uh, we saw that yesterday with one of the Phillies. I forget who it was. Someone that coming out of the 12 5 straight Phillies. But uh, Roly Spirit looks live in here. I, I'm 3 4 1. You make a um, possibilities to the two. There goes my hero yeah, coming off the maiden score. Lightly raced. I mean, yep. didn't get a big number. It was, you know, it's final time was he's going to have to be faster than that to win but who's to say that the horse won't continue to improve because it did improve and you know didn't have many backers last time it was 10 to 1 and uh, still managed to win the money and uh, keeps continuing to surprise you never know he will need to get better all right race two kicks off that uh, pick five carry over 55.99 we agree on the three roly spirit on to the third race now exactor try pick three wagering field of five $8,000 condition claimers are going to go six and a half furlongs. Might be on the same horse in here. You got Tam Tricky? Yep. Yeah. Pace casualty last time in a tough race. Uh, was out there uh, charting the course with Kay's Kitchen. Those two went pretty quick early. Uh, it's not surprising to see the horse tired to run fifth. I mean, Shamra, she's going to be running in this Emerald Downs no, stake. She's nominated, uh, yes. The Emerald Downs race <laughs> here. It's called the Emerald Downs. Uh, right. Uh, Stakes race, but uh, it's run here at Hastings. But uh, Tam Tricky just hooked into a really tough non-three that day, and uh, she's in a non-three. This is a, a lot easier for her. I like Tam Tricky to maybe to defeat the two ducks on the pond. 
for trainer Sean Lawson, makes his first start of the year. This one was purchased, uh, claimed down at uh, the fairgrounds by the Willow Creek Farms, and Fabio Chiesa was moved to the Grant Forster Barn. They had one run there at, at Mooney Valley, and uh, he's come up here to Hastings, and uh, Fraser Abley will be aboard, so get, get in light, and definitely an interesting newcomer. And same with the five, no people, another newcomer claimed. Dino's done very well with these horses. He has. They've claimed extremely uh, well. They've done their homework well. This one's in, owned in partnership with Larry Potosny and Jordan Froelich. But uh, this horse is live as well. But I think Tam Tricky has the speed. There is not a lot of speed, and she's not going to get pressured like she did last time. Ducks, and if she doesn't win, it's two or five. I went four, two, five. I have to agree with you on the four, Tam Tricky, and good luck to uh, tr trainer Sean Lawson, his first start, yes. and assistant trainer Michaela Edwards. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun <laughs> for them. They, they've uh, this will be the first starter they've had. They've been working hard, and uh, yeah, they get like nine horses up there. Uh, right. Then it's uh, nice to get to run one of them. And also, we didn't mention Island Living. A uh, good win last time, but that was against straight three-year-olds. Once again, another one straight three-year-olds gets in a, against the older horses in here. Different ball game, but uh, definitely deserves a mention in here. All right, race three, we do agree on the four, Tam Tricky. On to the fourth race now kicks off the pick four, guaranteed at ten grand. Scratch the five, you don't own me. First distance test of the year, Mike, a mile in the 16th. Where'd you go in here? I see some pace with Avs in command at Dawn with the Wind. Is it going to set up somebody like Appellant? Yeah. Or somebody else? Oh, I like Gorky Park, but right. I think there will be. No one's getting away cheap on the head end. Uh, but Dawn with the Wind is interesting in here because uh, he is making his first start, though. That's the only difficult thing. And he's right. not going to get the lead, though, with Avs in command in the race. I just thought Gorky Park had been running mile races down in Phoenix last winter and uh, got the one... You know, shook the rust off in that sprint behind Goodbye Putin and Finding Ways. Finding Ways came back to shellac the field yesterday and won 16 and 2. So hooked into a. That was for 62. He's down for 4. Uh, I put Abs in command I, in for second and, and Appellant for third. I, I really like Gorky Park, though. Right. That's the horse I do like in this race. And uh, I just think he's the best. Well, I picked him in his first two starts. I got to go back to Appellant, as you do sometimes. Yeah. You know, you, you well, try and stick with the horse. Sprinting. You might as well uh, stick uh, with him. Exactly. He's, I don't know uh, why you're picking him sprinting. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, this is his third start yeah. off the uh, the form cycle. I mean, off the, the layoff. And uh, I'm going to give old Appellant another shot. Yeah, this definitely deserves respect. Uh, you know, it's gonna get a good, he's going to get a good pace to run at. He needs a mile of 16th, and he yeah. gets it. And uh, he's a good horse when they go along. All right, race four. Mike's going to head to the two Gorky Park. I'm going to head to the three. Appellant kicks off the $10,000 guaranteed pick four. On to the fifth race now. Field of six. Six and a half furlongs. Exactor tries. Superfecta. Pick three. Wagering. Well, I can tell you that I'd like to see what's going to happen by the first quarter. Because yeah, the last time these two hooked up in the uh, George Royal, Sir Bregovic and Bold Arch, they basically dueled themselves into defeat. Yeah. But Sir Bregovic's pretty brave, though. He's a fighter. Oh, no like, doubt. He gets the lead. He generally hangs around. And, uh, you know, he, f out, he, he outfought Majestic Street, who had been running out of the Paddy Lee. The horse been running at uh, Turf Paradise. Right. Had winter conditioning fitness on him. Quinto Soul had been working well for Gonzi Anderson. The horse looked like could be a winner turning for home. But Sir Bregovic held them all off, and he was not going to let a horse by. He's just one of those gritty horses. You know, he's seven years old now. He you know, doesn't get to run very often. He's only, it's only his 19th career start. You know, being a seven-year-old, uh, Jim does a good job with him. No, he rations his because he. Run, well, the thing is, he runs so hard. You can't run these horses every two weeks. Right. Like when they they lay their body on the line like that and get exhausted, uh, you got to give them a month or you know three to four weeks, at least three weeks between races for them to recharge. The you know the lemon gets squeezed dry and. Uh, you got to let him, you know, recharge, and, and uh, he has. And I think Sir Bregovic will be pretty live. And if, you know, he does fail because he is going to have to deal with Bold Arch, then you got Foreign Protocol and Slew's Back are both very good closers. I think Slew's Back will be better than he was last time, and also Foreign Protocol. He just uh, didn't get the pace scenario. It was only 23 and 3, 46 right. and 4 uh, when running behind Sir Bregovic, but he's going to get far better than that. He gets an extra half a furlong. I'm going to head to the one foreign protocol, six to one on the morning line. I know he's been coming up from uh, Northern California, Golden Gate, where they run on the mm -hmm. synthetic. But look back at his form. His dirt form is very good. Yeah, he's seven wins. Exactly. Four, so, you know, he's got a he's 33 percent on dirt. Uh, you know, he 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 can win races, and uh, he's going to get a good setup. This will be a way better chance for foreign protocol today. Florida Gators. What do you do with the Gator? I was going to. Yeah, he's it. running his three three-year-olds last year. He's running. He, you know, it's just a new new league for him. 
And uh, but he he's a good solid horse. You know, he won four races here last year, and he uh, he he always showed up. And I think he'll show up again today. And Smart Lads, interesting. He was a good third behind a very well met Big Union in a sixteen thousand claimer. But that sixteen was like a thirty two. Right. That was a tough race uh, with uh, Big Union in it. I think he's nominated to the stake and probably running in the George Royal next weekend. But uh, good race. Bold Arch is cool. Yeah, a lot going on in here. I, I had trouble pinpointing one, but uh, Sir Bregovic is just the most honest, consistent horse out of all of them. I went to him. All right, race five. Mike's heading to the three. Sir Bregovic, I'm going to head to the rail. Number one, foreign protocol. On to the sixth race now. Scratch the three. CC Sunrise, scratch the seven. Peterson Landing. Field of six to go six and a half for lungs. They are maidens. Daily double exactor, try and superfecta wagering. It's a rail horse for me now, number one, Indiana. Yeah, I always liked Indiana in this race anyway. Uh, this horse is dropping from Maiden Special in for the 20 or 16. In for 20 being a BC bred, right. gets a uh, leading rider. Uh, wasn't disgraced in that race behind Bunny, Licorice, and next out winner Freestyle. So uh, this is easier. There's, I don't know, with Peterson landing out, it's really, uh, you're probably going to get 6 to 5 or something on Indiana, but I think she will deliver the goods. Uh, putting in behind her, I put the, uh, the two horse star finality. For Patty Lini and the Russos, uh, not a bad run I, I, in her first run. She's got away slowly. I don't know what happened there because she'd been showing good speed in Phoenix. Right. And they were walking up front, 24 and 2, 48 and 3, Little Sister Lee. And the horse was last. It was yeah. just an odd performance, but I'm sure she'll be better this time. I'll take it to blinkers off, too. And the Start sixth horse, now. she's bourbon on ice. It would be my next horse. Uh, once again, that, that was in a straight three-year-old filly race losing to Island Living and, and little sister Lee who did come back to lose for four grand right. yesterday but still she's burned on, burned on ice ran well with Fraser Abley that BC 2-2 would be the next one uh, yeah I went 1-2-6 all right race six we agree on the one Indietta out of the seventh and final event scratch the seven it's in command a field of seven now to go six and a half exactor try superfecta super high five wagering 20 cent wager and uh, you got to have it or it's carried. Carry over now is $955. Well, when I went up and down on this one, I have favorite horses I like, obviously. But I think there's five in here you could pick. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's a tough race to you close got it out. Ditch, uh, Quagmire, Ring of Carry, and Wise Market. They're all throw a blanket over them at the end of this race. And exactly. It's gonna be, they're very comparable in ability. Whoever just gets a little bit better trip will win the money. I went to ditch you, but uh, strictly a guess. He, ran, he went well fresh last year as a 10-year-old. He's now 11 years young and uh, continues to run good races. He's been beaten by Quagmire and Ring of Carry and Wise Market in the past, but he's beaten them also. Right. So they, they trade punches back and forth, and they're, they know each other well, and they meet up in the starting gate. Uh, there's a lot of history between those four horses, and, and uh, just whoever gets a little bit better trip. I put in Wise Market, who will get a better trip now with its in-command out, right. and the five-horse Quagmire, who's always dangerous, and Ring of Carry I left out of the top three, but that could be a mistake. Uh, Definitely is, is well, a you got to leave somebody out. That's the problem. Took advantage <laughs> of a hot pace last time. This horse, you know, probably going to get over bet because it ran second. Right. But that was a perfect scenario that day. They were flying up from 22 and 1, 45 and 2, and the race really fell apart at the end. And uh, I, I just think this race has come up tougher than that last one did with a ditch at Quagmire and Wise Market in here. Well, I'm going to the outside to the eight. Wise Market gets leading rider Amadeo Perez. And uh, what can you say about this guy? Former Jack Diamond Futurity winner. He's banked uh, well over a quarter million dollars. Yep. And uh, he just comes to play, too. Yeah, he ran a good third. Uh, yep. Good by Putin and finding ways. That was a tough race. It was a good trip. It was only four horses in the race. You know, actually, you look on the high, high, you know, from backwards, he only beat one horse. Right. But you can look at it you know he ran a good third but the pace scenario was very slow when he finished on well but still he's live and when he when he, anytime he's in for four grand he's live all right race seven as we close out the sunday card and the week's racing mike's heading to the three adigia i'm gonna head to the eight wise market that does wrap up the sunday afternoon edition of hastings racing live presented by bc racebook don't forget live racing continues next weekend a couple of stakes next weekend saturday and sunday first race both days will be 2 p.m and for our simulcast players don't forget tomorrow a lot of the major tracks memorial going day. on with memorial day yeah all the u.s tracks are the major ones will be running uh yeah so uh, lots of good races i think belmont's got a really good card uh, I think they have their I think they're all mile. New York like, like they have a lot of good races this, this weekend, and I know Memorial, but Memorial Day card is is uh, always one of the signature days on the calendar in the U.S. And uh, so if you're not doing anything tomorrow, come on out. You're 
Yep. All right. It should be a lot of fun. As we leave you, here's a complete look at our selections for today's card. Till next weekend. Good luck, everyone. Have a good day. My goal is one day to be a successful trainer just like them, you know, like Barb Heads, uh, Dino, uh, all of them, they have their names that they've been doing this for a year and, and I, I'm just new and I'm just trying to learn uh, everything as much as I can. Nobody in my family uh, rides horses. I'm uh, actually, me and, and my brother, younger brother, we started at, uh, riding horses in Mexico City when I was nine years old. I wanted to be a lawyer in Mexico, but uh, <laughs> I prefer the horses to <laughs> instead of being in school. Well, I think it's very important to ride your own horses because you get to feel them more than a trainer that is just watching them. We love horses, and if you love horses, you're gonna make sure like they are they are good, you know, they are happy, and, and we we do treat horses sometimes better than people. <laughs> when you see your horses going for the race and they're happy and they win for us, that's all. Like I, you know, sometimes I don't want to wake up wake up in the morning, but that's what makes me get up in the morning early and just to watch them winning races and fighting for us. It's just a, a wonder for us.
Pleasant good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hastings. Track condition at present listed as track fast. Special welcome to everyone joining us for our Sunday card. Now please turn to your official programs for this afternoon's corrections and changes. Race one today, there are no changes. In the second, correct the weight on number one. Remember the Alamo to 110 pounds. Number two, there goes my hero, two pounds over. Race two kicks off the $1 pick five. The carryover is $5,599. Now please turn to the third. In the third, number one, Stop Shopping Shelley is four pounds over. Number three, Island Living is four pounds over. Race three kicks off the first of two pick threes. In the fourth race, our first distance race of the year at a mile and a sixteenth. Number three, Appellant is one pound over. Scratch the five, you don't own me. Race four kicks off the pick four, guaranteed at $10,000. In the fifth, number two, Slew's back, one pound over. Number four, Florida Gator, one pound over. In the sixth, number one, Indietta, three pounds over. Number two, Star Finality, four pounds over. Scratch the three, CC Sunrise. Number five, Lent Me 20, two pounds over. Scratch the seven, Peterson Landing. And then the seventh. Number six, Ring of Kerry, one pound over. Scratch the seven, it's in command. There is a super high five carryover of $955. Those are all the changes and corrections to the present time. At this time, Hastings would like to welcome our Sunday afternoon groups. They include the Embers Group on their community day. They are the East Side Movement for Business and Economic Development. Happy birthday to Jeffrey May. Special welcome to BNI Lionsgate. Social Event Business Networking Group. Michaela Davies Baby Shower. Lowheat Village Bar Dane Frost Group. Happy birthday to Saul Isero. And birthday greetings go out to David Zakharov. Don't forget live racing continues next weekend. First race both days will be 2 p.m. Thank you for your attention and good luck.
Good. Welcome to the paddock here at Hastings on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Our final race day in May. We do have seven races for you today. Should be a lot of fun. Good feature race in race number five. Good allowance runners or allowance type runners. It's an actually a 25 up to 32,000 claimer, but uh, some stakes winners in there. That'll be in race number five. Pick five, carry over. Kind of neat. Race number two, it starts just under 5,600 bucks. That's in race number two. It does start for you pick five players. It is a $1 bet. See if we can build on that, Mike. The first half of your early double. Sees a field of five. $4,000 claimers that have not won three races. Got four geldings in here and one mare. That is the mare, Gwen, the number one. Was in against the boys last time in a non-two. Uh, she obviously overstepping a condition, but the races just uh, haven't filled great for her, and so she's here to help out her stablemate, IBC and you, the four horse. But she has some speed. Look for her to be out there probably sitting second early. I think Monty will obviously be conceded the lead today. But Gwen's a good hard trying mare. Uh, just the one win last season, but had three thirds in her six trips to the post. Sylvina Morales will be aboard Gwen. Two will be make it or break it. I'm leaning towards the two, uh, make it or break it in this one. There's the two. First up run was against tougher uh, non-threes for eight. Wasn't disgraced in that race against Foot Soldier. And I'm a Chai 2. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm a Chai 2 uh, did drop down with Make It or Break It into that non-winners a three for 4,000. and Just was a little too much for Make It or Break It. Ended up losing second and ended up third. I think I think he'll get a better trip today. The barn had a nice winner yesterday with accordingly. Amadeo Perez uncharacteristically did not win a race yesterday. So he'll be he'll be anxious maybe to get a winner. Doesn't Five to two on make it or break it. Yeah, he doesn't get shut out very often. Three will be debatable. He was out there battling with make it or break it on the lead that day. There was three of them out there. But uh Lost the battle to make it or break it. I think they're better served to let him settle back and make one run. Uh, being up on the pace thing, that's just not his gig. Look for him to be less aggressively ridden early today. Four will be IBC and you. That horse ran a huge race last time. Good second behind I'm a Chai too. Leary Cicheran gets the call. Certainly looks great here in the paddock. You see Rob Maben giving Leary a leg up. Excellent off the pace chance today. 7 to 2 is the price on the four horse IBC and you. And next up's the five. That's your favorite. That's Monty. He's even money. He's fast, but can he carry his speed the entire trip? We'll see. Not getting a big reward on him at even money, but uh, he is fast and he'll lead for a long ways anyway. He did. Win the non-two last in his final start last year, just desperately ahead of Rolly Spirit and Barney Google. Good final prep in forty five and four. He's fast. I went to the two, make it or I had no idea in here. It just for me, it was two, four, five. They're all interchangeable. That's the way I kind of see it. No love for anyone, but definitely the two, four, five are your horses here in race number one. Horses on the track at Hastings for the opener. It's a field of five. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the early daily double, exactor and triactor wagering. Post time in seven minutes.
Here's the field for the opener, number one, Gwen, owned by Robin Sheena Mabin, the rider, Silvino Morales. Number two, make it or break it, owned by the Canmore Farms, Amadeo Perez to ride. Three is debatable, owned by Jim Strachan, the rider, Jose Sanchez. Number four, IBC and you, owned by Rob and Sheena Maven. The rider is Leary Cicheran. And number five, Monty, owned by the Canyon Farms. In the saddle, apprentice, Fraser Abley. Six minutes to post time. All right, to kick off our Sunday card, let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. We are six minutes away from the opener here at Hastings. A field of five to go, six and a half furlongs. Number five, Monty, will be looking for that early lead. We'll have a little bit of competition on the inside trying to get that same advantage. First start of the year, we'll be setting quick early fractions, which I think will set up for my top choice in here, and that is IB Seeing You. This horse ran a really nice runner-up effort his first time out this season, going six furlongs, which definitely is not his preferred distance. If it would have been six and a half that day, I do think he would have been able to get to the winner and get that non-three victory there. And then rounding out my top three selections there is make it or break it. We'll also be sitting just off that early pace duel that I see happening between the five and one. So look for him to be making a little bit of a run down late on that pace. But the deep closer I be seeing you is who I think will come closing late and run down the pace set on the front end for to five is how I see the opener. You have four minutes to make your wagers, get them in early and best of luck. Under three minutes to post time at Hastings. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. Loading it now for the opener at Hastings. First one up will be Gwen to the inside gate. Debatable to gate three. Make it or break it. IBC and you. And Monty, your four to five choice to the outside. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Monty from the outside, quick and on the early lead, make it or break it, gets away in second. At the rail is Gwen in third, IBC and you, and the early trailer is debatable. Under the line, Monty is torn off and opened up a six or seven length lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and it's Monty, well clear of the field. In second at the rail is Gwen, make it or break it on the outside third. IBC and you sits in fourth, and four back debatable. That opening quarter was ripped off in 21 flat. As they head down the back stretch, Monty with the lead now by about seven or eight. Make it or break it, closest pursuer. Gwen at the rail third, IBC and you fourth. Then it's debatable in fifth. He's about 12 off the lead. As they race into the far turn, the half, 44 and four. And now a quarter mile from home. And Monty with the lead, but it is shrinking. Make it or break it, closing ground. Then on the outside now is IBC and you. As they turn for home, Monty is gone. It's make it or break it with the lead. IBC and you ranging up on the outside. Debatable is third and trying to close ground. Make it or break it, IBC and you. And debatable, make it or break it to win it. IBC and you second, debatable third, followed by Gwen and Monty. On the board, the unofficial winner, number two, make it or break it. Number four, IBC and you second, three, debatable third, one, Gwen is fourth. Two, four, three, one, unofficial.
Back to the winner's enclosure. The winner of the opener, number two, make it or break it. He's owned by the Canmore Farms, trained by Mark Cluche. Winning riders, Amadeo Perez. Make it or break it, a four-year-old gelding by Numani out of Monashi. Spread NBC by Ole Nielsen. The result is official. Two dollar exactor two four was eight seventy. Two dollar try two four three eighteen thirty. Vital running time for the six and one half furlongs, one eighteen and fifty eight one hundreds. There was a claim in that first race. Number one, Gwen, claimed by Jordan Frolick, trainer Dino Condolinius. Race two, correct the weight on the one. Remember the Alamo to one hundred ten pounds. Number two, there goes my hero, two pounds over. Post time, twenty minutes away at two thirty.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number two here at Hastings. Well, good run from make it or break it in the opener. Did not disappoint. It's three to one when they went in the gate. Ended up six to five. Late money came for make it or break it, and they were right. For the Canmore Farms, Mark Cluche and Amadeo Perez. The losing streak is over for Amadeo. But uh, good run. Sitting second behind runaway leader Monty. IBC and you was a good second. Those two formed the exactor. Debatable ran on well to be third. But make it or break it. Kicks things off on our Sunday afternoon program. Here's the one. This is remember the Alamo. He's very fast. He's not like Monty fast, though, but he's hasn't been showing the stamina one would like. He just has the one win going three and a half. All his two-turn races, have he's kind of struggled. I know they've been in some tough races. But his last race, I thought he would be better than that, even though the winner won easily. I still couldn't beat Philly Fatale and Silverone. This is a big drop. Fraser Abley will ride. There is other speed in here. But he's definitely going to control the pace. Or shouldn't be 10 to 1. The barn's been on fire. Win another one yesterday with finding ways. Up to nine victories atop the standings here. We'll see if the class drop is the recipe that, uh, remember, the Alamo needs to get into the winner's circle again. Two will be There Goes My Hero. Surprised a lot of people winning at 10 to 1. Breaking his maiden for four grand, just outrunning uh, D De Niro. It wasn't the toughest maiden for this obviously is a lot tougher race. He will need to improve, and perhaps he can. For Helen Climes, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring. Well, they'll be watching Helen and Sharon. Joe will be here. There she's in the paddock. But yes, uh, certainly a, a, a much improved effort last time, and we'll see if There Goes My Hero continues to move forward. Silvino Morales sticks with him. 7-1. to one. On the two, there goes my hero. Three is Roly Spirit, named after our dearly departed uh, Roly Embry, who big friend of racing, insurance broker that uh, a lot of people insured their horses with Roly, and just a good guy, former horse owner, breeder, actually bred this horse, the Embry Farms. Back-to-back -back second since breaking his maiden last year. I thought it was a good first up run. Just ran into a tough one in Trapolis. I like Rolly Spirit today. I think he sits second just off of Remember the Alamo, and I think he's good enough to run him down. Brian Budram Singh gets the call. Four will be Barney Google. Closing third behind Trapolis and just missed in a photo too. Uh, Rolly Spirit for second. Usually gets himself a little far out of it to win, but we'll see if he can lay a little closer. But there is speed in here. With rem remember the Alamo, so perhaps his late kick could get him the money. He's one for 16 lifetime. Let's see if he can go two for 17. Five to two on Barney Google. Five will be Champiosa for Judy Bradley and Jim Smith. Formerly trained by Clint Wilson, who unfortunately passed away this winter. There's a good look at Champiosa. Broke his maiden when blinkers were added. Two starts back. That was last year. This will be his first start. He's interesting. And number six will be Atomic Hayes. Clad in those ear cones. No success first time out at this level. Obviously needs to be better. Gets Ridge Balgobin, 25-1 to 1 on Atomic Haze. I like the three-rolly spirit. Uh, 
That's the one I kind of like in here. I, I did go three, four, and one. It's kind of the way I see it here. In this afternoon, second. Kind of the tote board tells you that as well. But uh, certainly a good opportunity in here for the three horse Rolly Spirit. Good luck, everyone. Pick five kicking off here. 55 99 carryover. Get those pick fives in. The horses on the track at Hastings for race number two. It's a field of six. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and one dollar pick five wagering. Pick five has a carryover of five thousand five hundred ninety-nine dollars. Once again, it is not a jackpot pool. Just need five of five correct. Here's the field, number one, remember the Alamo, owned by the Swift Thoroughbreds Incorporated, the Riders Apprentice, Fraser, Abley. Two, there goes my hero, owned by Helen Climes, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring, Silvino Morales aboard. Number three, Rolly Spirit, owned by the Willow Lake Farm and Stables, the rider is Brian Budramsing. Number four, Barney Google. All by Michelle Roberts Henson, Brad Henson, Randy Henson, Dan Henson, and Trevor Irwin. Amadeo Perez in the saddle. Five, Champiosa. All by Judy Bradley, the riders Leary Cicheran. And number six, Atomic Hayes. All by Charlene Miller, the rider is Ridge Balgobin. Six minutes to post time. Your attention please for a late scratch now. Further on on today's card in race seven. In the seventh, scratch now, number one, Sir Barkley. Race seven, late scratch of the one, Sir Barkley. All win play show, exactor, triactor, and superfecta tickets and super high five tickets will be refunded. Five minutes to post time.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Last chance to get involved in our $1 pick five. Carryover is $5,599. The horses have reached the starting gate. Starting in now for the second at Hastings. First one up is Rolly Spirit. Third choice on the board at two to one. There goes my hero, gate two. Barney Google, gate four.
Remember the Alamo to the inside gate. Atomic Hayes and Champiosa. Champiosa goes in, six in, they're at the post. There they go. They've all come away well from the center. Rolly Spirit from the rail. Remember the Alamo. Then in between them, there goes my hero. Three lengths back is Atomic Hayes. On his inside now comes Champiosa. Barney Google the trailer, and he's nine off the lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Remember the Alamo from the rail. Leads it now by a little over a length. It is, there goes my hero sitting in second. Rolly Spirit on the outside, two and a half off the lead. Break of three now to Champiosa, Atomic Hayes, and Barney Google. Opening quarter in just 23 flat. Midway on the box stretch now, three furlongs to run. And remember the Alamo with the lead. On the outside now is Rolly Spirit. Moving through between runners, there goes my hero. The half, 47 flat, quarter mile to home. Remember the Alamo. On the outside, Rolly Spirit in between them. There goes my hero. Now Barney Google is starting to close ground as they turn for home. Remember the Alamo with the lead. Rolly Spirit, Barney Google far outside. Then it's there goes my hero. Deep stretch, Barney Google strikes the front. And Barney Google will win it by two and a half. Tight photo for second. Remember the Alamo and Rolly Spirit. There goes my hero, fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number four, Barney Google. There is a photo for second. Please hold all tickets. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race two, number four, Barney Google. He's owned by Michelle Roberts Henson, Brad Henson, Randy Henson, Dan Henson, and Trevor Irwin. Trained by Robbie Henson, winning rider Amadeo Perez. Barney Google is a four-year-old gelding by Lent out of Leading Lady. Bred in BC by the Swashbuckler Thoroughbreds.
In the photo for second, please note it's a dead heat between number one, Remember the Alamo, and number three, Roly Spirit. Number two, There Goes My Hero, was fourth. So it's four, one, three, dead heat for second, and two. There will be multiple exactor, triactor, and superfecta payouts. Once again on the board is four, one, three in a dead heat for second, and two, multiple exactor, triactor, and superfecta payouts. The result is now official. The 20 cent super 4312 is $3.46. The exactor 4 and 1, $7.90. 4 and 3, $6 even. The double 2 and 4 returns $15.90. Two dollar try four one three was thirteen dollars and forty cents. Four three one try fourteen thirty. Four one three two twenty cent super three dollars sixty cents. Final running time was 119 and 66, one hundredths. 
In the third, number one, Stop Shopping Shelley, four pounds over. Three, Island Living is four over. Post time for the third, 16 minutes away at 3 o'clock.
All right, horses are here in the paddock for race number three here at Hastings. This third race kicks off your early pick three on races three, four, and five. We also have Exacta Triactor wagering for you. Well, big run from Barney Google. The win race number two from off the pace, giving Amadeo Perez both halves of the double. As we look at number one, Stop Shopping Shelley. A little easier assignment for her today. We'll see if she can get a win. Number two is Ducks on the Pond. A newcomer here for trainer Sean Lawson and Willow Creek Farms. Three will be Island Living. Nice maiden score against straight three-year-olds. Tougher tougher uh, assignment today. Four is Tam Tricky. Uh, I really like this horse. I think this horse is going to run a good race today. Ran against much tougher. That, that Shamra Amanda Case Kitchen race is miles tougher than this. And number five is No People. I don't have a lot to go on on this horse, but uh, brought decent form from Phoenix. At least it's winter raced and uh, razor sharp and fit. Moved to the sharp Dino Condolinio spar and Silvino Morales will ride. I, I like Tam Tricky in here. Uh, looks... I, I just think she's going to wire the field. There's not a lot of speed in the race, and I think she's got a good opportunity to get on into the winner's circle for the win racing stables in Larry Grieve. That's the way I kind of see it here in race number three. I went four, two, and five. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number three, field of five, to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, triactor, and pick three wagering. Post time in nine minutes. Race three today is the Embers Pace on their community day here at Hastings. Embers is a registered Canadian charity whose mission is to create economic and employment opportunities for people providing jobs, training, and support. Embers has won multiple provincial and national awards for their community impact and initiatives aimed at getting people back to work. Here's the field number one stop shop in Shelley owned by the MJD stables, the rider Amadeo Perez. Two is Ducks on the Pond, owned by the Willow Creek Farms, and Fabio Chiesa, apprentice Fraser Abley rides. Three is Island Living, owned by Randy Lane and Roy Nelson, Kieran Kelawan up. Four, Tam Tricky, owned by Wynn Racing Stables, Kamal Santo riding. And the five, No People, owned by Larry Patozny and Jordan Froelich, Silvino Morales aboard. Seven minutes to post time.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate.
The horses have reached the starting gate. On again now for the third. Stop shopping Shelley to the inside gate. Next one up is Island Living. Ducks on the pond. Outside gate, no people. And Tam Tricky. Five in. They're at the post. There they go. Tam Tricky, straight and true, and on the early lead. Down on the inside is Ducks on the Pond, Island Living. And from the outside, now no people, early trailer, stop shopping, Shelley. Under the line, it's Tam Tricky with the lead now by a tight length. Down on the inside, saving ground is Island Living. Up on the outside now as they go to the clubhouse turn is no people. Then there's a break of five back to Ducks on the Pond and three and a half to stop shopping, Shelley. Opening quarter in just 23 and 1. As they head down the box stretch, it's Tam Tricky with the lead by a little over a length. No people from the outside, second by a head. Island Living at the rail in third by three. Then it's back to Ducks on the Pond and Stop Shopping Shelley, 11 off the lead. Quarter mile from home, the half, 46 and 4. And it is Tam Tricky going along now with a two length lead. Island Living. No people, ducks on the pond, and stop shopping, Shelley. Eighth of a mile from home, Tam Tricky leads it by two and a half. And down the lane they come, Tam Tricky by two. No people second, far outside, ducks on the pond. Tam Tricky wins it in the clear. No people second, ducks on the pond third. Island living in, stop shopping, Shelley. On the board, the unofficial winner of race three, number four, Tam Tricky. Number five, No People, second. Number two, Ducks on the Pond, third. Number three, Island Living, fourth. Four, five, two, three, unofficial. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race three, number four, Tam Tricky. Owned by the Wind Racing Stables, trained by Larry Grieve, assisted by Ian Jewell. 
Winning rider, Kamal Santo. Tam Tricky is a four-year-old filly by Tamarendo out of Lee DeBet. Bred in California by Sharon R. Pasco. Race three today is the Embers race as they enjoy their community day here at Hastings. The result is official. The four five two dollar exactor was twelve dollars. Four five two two dollar try thirty eight sixty. Final running time, 118 and 31, one hundredths. In the fourth race, start of our $10,000 guaranteed pick four, scratch the five, you don't own me. Number three, appellant is one pound over. Our first distance race of the year at a mile and a sixteenth. Post time, 21 minutes away at 3.32.
All right, welcome back to the paddock here at Hastings. Time for race number four. This fourth race does kick off the pick four on races four through seven. Exacta Triactor and Superfecta wagering here on the fourth. Scratch the five, you don't own me. Once again, scratch the five in here, you don't own me. Going to go a mile and a sixteenth. It'll be the first mile and a sixteenth test of the season. Well, big run from Tam Tricky. As expected, got a pretty comfortable lead. And she made no mistakes under Camel Santo and wins it for the win racing stables and Larry Grief. Tam Tricky wins race number three. Here's the one. This is Avs in command. This horse is a very good distance horse. It's one of those few speed horses that does carry their speed going long. Ran well first time out. Losing to more than sole title and ring a carry. Still was only beaten a length and a quarter. You know, my only concern with her today, or him, pardon me, is the Dawn with the wind uh, surfacing in the race, which is another, I wouldn't say need the lead type, but a horse that's going to be close to the early play pace, and that's the way the horse runs. Amadeo's not going to give you the lead easy, and Jose Gomez definitely going to put this one on the lead, so just a little worried that the fractions could get a little quick. There's a good look at Avs in command, currently 7-2. to two. Number two will be Gorky Park for the win racing stables, looking for back-to-back. -back. Camille Santo and Larry Grieve. Good fourth place run, sprinting, but the horse wants to go along. That was for 62, dropped in here for four. Definitely a good opportunity for Gorky Park. He's a big, tall son of twirling candy. Quite long, uh, just a long, lanky horse. Definitely conducive to this mile and a sixteenth distance. Not surprising he didn't sprint well. He wasn't poor in that race, but he was just out there, and he's just not as fast as other horses. But at a mile and a sixteenth, he'll be very good. I like him to win it, and he's five to two. Three will be a pellant. He's another one that needs this distance of ground. He has no speed. And there is speed in the race, so uh, there could be a good pace scenario set up for him. For Helen and Ian Jewell. He too was well beaten sprinting, but uh, he's just not a sprinter. Gets to stretch out here, and uh, I think he'll see his best. 9-2 is a good price on a pellet. Four's McMurphy. He can sprint. He can go long. He can do it all. He's a neat horse. Was out of position last time and uh, early showed in the way he ran. He ran six feet and three and a half lengths, but he was, he was in a terrible spot early. He just got bounced around leaving the gate, and he was, as I said, out of position in between horses in six in a nine-horse field. That's not where you want to be. It's just an intimidating place, and he ran very average. He'll get a much better trip in this field of five. Don't sell him short. He, he can beat these horses. Silvino rides for the Mavens. And number six will be Don with the Wind, your two-to-one co-favorite. He's just hiding in the shadows there, staying out of the sun. Closed out last season with a couple of breezing through a couple of conditions as non-two and non-three. A couple of powerhouse victories. One by five and a half, then dead heated with Guns and Ammo, who was going very good at the time. Trainer Rob Van Overshot wants to route him first time out. He worked him a mile in 140 and two fifths on May the 20th. Not even going to waste his time sprinting him. And definitely being the, the owner, he can do whatever he wants. But uh, certainly a good chance with Don with the wind. He appears to be ready. It's just a matter if he stays out of a pace duel with Avs in command, which could happen. But uh, I like Gorky Park. I, I, his races in Phoenix definitely plot him as the best horse in the race at this distance. I think Appellant will rebound with a good performance today, the three horse. And I was between the one and six for third. Uh, but uh, definitely like Gorky Park. 
But all five in with a chance. <coughs> right, riders up call has just been given. Yeah. Got nine minutes to post to figure out your pick fours. A couple scratches in the seventh race. Sound like the one Sir Barkley in the uh, seven. It's in commander, both out of the last. Six three scratch the three CC Sunrise and the seven Peterson Landing. Race number six scratch the three and seven. That's race six scratch the three and the seven and the seven three scratch one and seven. That'll get you up to date with your pick four changes. Good luck. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number four. Start of our pick four, guaranteed at $10,000. It's a field of five now to go a mile and a sixteenth. Scratch the five. Post time in eight minutes. Here's the field number one, Avs in command, owned by the Sasquatch Stables and the Dreamtime Stable, Jose Gomez in the tack. Two is Gorky Park, by the Wind Racing Stables, Kamal Santo riding. Three is Appellant, owned by Helen Jewell, the rider, Kiron Kelawan. Four, McMurphy, owned by Rob and Sheena Mabin, Silvino Morales aboard. And the six, Dawn with the Wind, owned by Rob Van Overshot. The riders, Amadeo Perez. Six minutes to post time. Hi, right, there's a look at our late pick four here, sponsored by Twinspires.com for Sunday, May the 28th, $10,000 guaranteed. I've spread out quite deep in the first one, two, three with one, three, four keying off the one in race six and two, three, five, six, eight in the nightcap for nine dollars. Mike's gone two, three with one, two, three, four with one with three, five, six, eight for six forty. That is the pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com. All right, time to go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. We have five minutes for the guaranteed $10,000 pick four here in race number four, down to a field of five with the scratch of five. You don't owe me. Number six, Dawn with the Wind Current, tote board favorite at nine to five. I have him in my third choice here. He's only ran the distance four times in his life. He has two wins in two seconds. My only concern coming into today's race is he's the only one without a racing advantage. And to go a mile and a 16th at first asking, he does have a good bottom of work tabs did work a mile back on may 20th look for him to be on the front end or close to that's where he has his most success they've opened up the blinkers a little bit today hoping to get him to relax there is speed from number one abs in command and mcmurphy however if he can sit off of those hopefully be able to have a good effort here today number three appellant 
Last race, I think you can throw that effort out. He was not true to form that day. Stretching out to his much preferred distance of a mile and a sixteenth. Look for him to have a late closing style here. He is one of the only late closers in this race, so he'll let that speed unfold in front of him. And my choice in here is number two, Gorky's Point. Win racing and Kamal Santos are looking for back-to-back -back victories. This horse came to Hastings with racing advantage throughout the winter. Got that one start over the course here, which generally helps them look for horses like that coming from the mile track to need that one race over the bullring before being successful. I went 2-3-6 to kick off the pick four here in race number four. You got four minutes to make your wagers. Get them in early and best of luck. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute.
Okay, horses are approaching the starting gate. Starting it now for the fourth at Hastings. Habs in command to the inside gate. Gorky Park, McMurphy, Don with the wind. Last one up is Appellant. Appellant goes in, five in, threat the post. There they go. Closely bunched from the outside. Dawn with the win from the rail. Avs in command. It's McMurphy who gets a good spot in third. Gorky Park, appellant, is your lead trailer. Rounding the far turn, and it is from the rail. Avs in command by a head. Dawn with the win, second now by two and a half. Going along in third, it's McMurphy. Two lengths further back is Gorky Park. And appellant, the trailer, eight off the lead. Opening quarter, a sensible 24 and 1. Through the stretch for the first time. Avs in command from the rail by a head. Pressing on the outside, Dawn with the wind. Two lengths further back now is McMurphy. On the outside, Gorky Park, he's got about three and a half to make up. Appellant is the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Avs in command. Still with a short lead. Up on the outside, Dawn with the wind, the half, 48 and 2. It is McMurphy at the rail, patiently ridden in third. Gorky Park is now called upon in fourth, an appellant the trailer. Midway on the back stretch, and Avs in command with the lead, three eighths from home by a length. Dawn with the win, second by two. Gorky Park roused in third, appellant splits runners, and McMurphy now shuffled back to last. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs, 113 and one. Avs in command, Dawn with the win, Gorky Park, Appellant is now moving through, and Appellant has taken the lead. As they turn for home, Appellant leads it now by a length and a half. Gorky Park in second, McMurphy is third, Don with the win, fourth. Deep stretch now, it's Appellant by two, and Appellant is striding away by three. It's Appellant to win it in the clear. Gorky Park second, McMurphy is third, and Don with the win, fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number three, Appellant. Number two, Gorky Park, second. Number four, McMurphy, third. Number six, Don with the wind, fourth. Three, two, four, six, on the board.
The result is official. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner for race four, number three, Appellant. He's owned by Helen Jewell, is trained by Ian Jewell, and the winning rider is Kieran Kellawan. Appellant is a eight-year-old gelding by Midnight Loot out of Caged Mistress, bred in Kentucky by Glen Todd. Three two two dollar exactor was thirty seven dollars. Three two four two dollar try one thirty two. Twenty cent super three two four six. Twenty four dollars and twenty one cents. Final running time for the mile in the 16th, 145 and 72, 100. There was a claim in that fourth race. Number one, Avs in command. Claimed by Robin Sheena Maben. Trainer Rob Maben. In the fifth, number two, Slews back, one pound over. Number four, Florida Gator, one pound over. Post time for the fifth, 19 minutes away at 
All right, we're back here in the paddock for race number five here at Hastings. Fifth race kicks off your late pick three on races five, six, and seven. Good group of six we've assembled, $25,000 claimers. Some in for the 32. Going six and a half. Well, congratulations to Ellen and Ian Jules Appellant. And our rider Karen Kelvin, who rallies from last to first to win. Loving the mile in the 16th distance did Appellant. And rewarding his backers with a nice $13.50 mutual. But uh, Appellant kicks off the pick four with an impressive win. Well, here's the one. This is four in protocol. He does have some speed, but he certainly didn't show it in his Hastings debut three weeks ago. Ended up a good closing fourth behind Sir Bregovic, Majestic Street, and a Quinto Soul. Some of those races down south plot him right in the mix. I mean, he's live in here. I can certainly see him winning. I know Dan likes him today, and I... I've got him in the mix. Currently 9 to 2 on foreign protocol. There should be some speed in here. And so his off the pace style should uh, get rewarded. It's just a matter of whether he's good enough. Uh, he was claimed for 12 5. But he's he's won you know obviously for higher than than 12 5 in the past. He's got 10 lifetime wins. He's just a pretty neat horse and owned by the Melbourne Legacy. Trained by our HBPA president, Dave Milburn. Two will be slews back for the foundation stables. They own and bred this horse. Of course, they raced the mare slew pass, who was very nice. And slews back's been a real nice horse for them as well, winning five times. I believe three of them in Alberta. He just seems to really like a century mile. He's had a couple of wins here. A good run first time out. He ran against the best, soaring for the sun, Cascade Billy. That was a tough uh, first up run. Gonna, gets in his easier assignment today. When he's on his game, he's pretty tough. He shouldn't be 9-1 to one in here. He's every bit as good as anyone in, in this race. There's no one that outclasses him. Karen Kellawan looking for back-to-back -back wins. Three will be Sir Bregovic. He's got all the speed, Sir Bregovic. Wired the field in his last, uh, the same at the same level. Pace scenario wasn't that fast last time. He's going to get more pace pressure with a six bold arch in here. I'll tell you that. He's not getting a one length lead in 23 and 3 and 46. Like we'll see a 44 and change in this one. We've already seen one today with Monty in the opener. But uh, he's a nice horse, Sir Bregovic. Uh, he's just classy. Seven lifetime wins, 18 trips to the post. Owned and bred by the Strackens. Got to pay the penalty for winning. Packing 124 pounds today. 7-2 to two on Sir Bregovic. But he's he's a cool horse. Number four will be Florida Gator. Puts his three-race winning streak on the line. He did beat a bunch of three-year-olds last year. But he, he had a good season. Uh, four victories since arriving here in Vancouver. He's sharp here in the paddock. He's excited to get things going. But this is a, a real acid test for him. There's some nice horses in here, pretty seasoned older runners. But we'll see how good he is. He's currently getting a lot of play at 5-2. to two. He'll get a good trip from off the pace. 5 will be smart lad. Big son of uh, Kitten's Joy. A no threat third behind Big Union at the 16,000 level. Well, that was a tough 16 with Big Union in it. Amadeo is going to ride smart lad. Number six is Bold Arch. 
Couldn't beat uh, Soaring for the Sun and Cascade Billy, but there's none of those types in here. He gets some class relief in for a high claiming tag. He will be tough in here today. Silvino gets along with him very well. He's live as well. This is a good race. Uh, there's a lot of chances in here. you got eight minutes to post to figure it out. I know there's only six horses in the race, but pretty much all six of them, under the right kind of scenario, could win it. I went 3-2-1, but uh, as I said, it's anyone's race. Good feature race. Let's send it up to Dan for the post parade race number five. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number five, field of six. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and pick three, wagering. Post time, eight minutes away. Here's your field number one, Foreign Protocol, owned by the Milburn Legacy, the rider, Leary Cicheran. Two is Slew's Back, owned by the Foundation Stables, rider, Kiron Kelawan. Three, Sir Bregovic, owned by Sean Strachan and Karen Strachan, the jockey, Jose Gomez. Pardon me, Jose Sanchez. Number four, Florida Gator, owned by Larry Petosny, Peter Langelin, and the Willoway Farms, Antonio Reyes in the saddle. Number five, Smart Lad, owned by George Gilbert, Amadeo Perez up. And the six, Bold Arch, owned by John and Kim Morrison and Robin Sadler. The rider, Silvino Morales. Six minutes to post time. Please note number six, Bold Arch returning to the paddock for a saddle adjustment.
Key West Ford remind you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
one, Indieta, three pounds over. Number two, Star Finality, four over, scratch the three. Number five, Lent Me 20, two over, scratch the seven. Post time for race six, 19 minutes away at 4.31.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number six here at Hastings. Got a group of $16,000 Philly and Mare Maidens. It's going to go six and a half furlongs. First half of your late daily double. You also have Exacta, Triactor, and Superfecta wagering. We've lost the three CC Sunrise and the seven. Peterson Landing, both the three and seven are scratched. As we look at the current favorite, that's Indieta. Uh, congratulations back in race number five to Larry Potosny, Pete Langelin, and the Will Away Farms. It's Florida Gator. It's his fourth win in a row, first of the season, though. Closed out 2022 with three wins against three-year-olds. Proved that he fits with these kind of horses under the right pace scenario. There was a good three-way speed duel that helped them out, but uh, Antonio Reyes split horses at the head of the lane. Florida Gator won race number five. Indiana, got, got to have a good shot in here. I'd, it's tough to go anywhere but with her in this race. Get leading rider. Cindy's Barnes running well. They're all live. Horses coming out of a live race. The bunny won very easily, but the third place runner, Freestyle, came back to win a maiden allowance. She's taking the drop down in here for the 16. Runs for 20, being a BC bred. Comes back with the work in 103 and 3. And uh, just I just think she's going to wire the field. Uh, I don't see any. This looks to be the one to beat. Current 2-1 to one favorite. Number 2 will be star finality. Blinker's off today. Showed speed in Phoenix, and Phoenix is a tough place to get near the lead. And first run here in a race that featured absolutely no speed, she was laying almost last, and I... But hopefully she'll be a little better, a lot better today, because that wasn't a tough maiden race. We'll see if she improves. 10 to 1 on star finality. The 4 will be Sweet as Henny, one of two Mel Snow runners in here. He saddles both the 4 and the 8. Sweet as Honey uh, makes her career debut as a four-year-old, daughter of Lent from the Meritiris Princess, who also raced in the Mel Snow Barn for the Breeders, the RJT Thoroughbreds. She'll debut in Blinkers, getting some play at 6-1. to one. Rich Balgovin will ride. Five is Lent Me 20. Silvino Morales up. Horse looks good here in the paddock. Getting play, too. 3-1 to one on Lent Me 20. Just the one run going 3.5. That was in a pretty quick heat, though. Work tab's been nice. Nice final prep in 35-1. and one. Six is She's Bourbon on Ice. Look at third behind Island Living and Little Sister Lee. Both Island Liv Living and Little Sister Lee came back to run this weekend and not very well. The eight is BC Choo Choo. Another one coming out of that bunny licorice and freestyle race. Like she's the liver of the Mel Snow Runners. Brian Bood Ramsing would get the pick of the litter in the Mel Snow Barn. We'll see if the class drop is what she needs to get into the winner's circle. She's 7 to 2. I went to the one, Indiana. I really think she's going to run well. I got 1, 2, and 6. Uh, once again, scratch the 3 and the 7. First half of your late double. Good luck, everyone, here in the 6th. Horses on the track at Hastings for race number six. Field of six, scratch the three and the seven. They're going to go six and one half for longs. First half of the late daily double, exactor, triactor, and superfecta wagering. Post time in eight minutes.
Here's the field, number one, Indieta, owned by Dennis Tucker and Brian Albertson, the rider, Amadeo Perez. Number two, Star Finality, owned by Joe Russo and Gloria Russo, Kieran Kellawan aboard. Ahead of Post Parade, the four, Sweet as Honey, owned by Len Howling and Mel Snow, Ridge Balgobin in the tack. Number five, Lent Me 20, owned by James Callahoo, Silvino Morales aboard. Six, She's Bourbon on Ice, owned by Harry Holden and Ashley Martin, the Riders Apprentice, Fraser Abley. And the eight, BC Choo Choo, owned by Don Denard and Sue Denard, the rider Brian Woodram Singh. Six minutes to post time. All right, let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. Down to a field of six maidens here for race number six. I went to the rail horse, Indietta. I think she's the one to come and beat. She's been asking for a little more distance, going six and a half today. She's galloped out strong after every race coming into today's effort. Ran fourth first time out, but I do think that she will be the one to come and catch here today. Number six, she's bourbon on ice. Ran a very even first start to her season. Apprentice Fraser Abley. This is a smaller filly, so having the weight allowance does help in her favor. And number two, the Blinkers come off star finality here today. She missed the break last time out, stumbled, got pushed around, and really lost most of her race right there at the break. Look for a better effort from her here today. Also has that one start over the Hastings race course under her belt as well. I went one six two here in race number six. They're all looking for that maiden victory. You got five minutes to make your wagers. Best of luck, and we'll see you back for the finale. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Starting it now for the sixth at Hastings. Sweet as honey has been loaded. Lent me 20. She's bourbon on ice. Outside gate, BC Choo Choo. Two left to load, Indietta and star finality. They both go in, six in, they're at the post. There they go. Indiana from the inside sent right off for the early late. Star Finality trying to keep pace with her. Up on the outside is BC Choo Choo, followed by Lent Me 20. She's bourbon on ice. And Sweet as Honey is the early trailer. Their noses apart on the inside, Indiana on the outside, Star Finality. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Indiana leads it now by a half. Star Finality, second by two. BC Choo Choo's on the outside of Lent Me 20. There's a big break now of about seven or eight. Back to She's Bourbon on Ice. And the trailer, Sweet as Honey. Opening quarter in 22 and 1. Three eights to run. Indiana on the inside, star finality. Now BC Choo Choo trying to make a line of three. Sitting in behind them, Lent Me 20. 
Quarter mile from home, the half up, 46 and two. And Indiana has the lead, but it's BC Choo Choo, the danger on the outside. Let me 20s at the rail and star finality. As they turn for home, Indiana has the lead and down the lane they come. Indiana leads it now by two and a half. BC Choo Choo at the rail, lent me 20. She's bourbon on ice, closing but too late. Indiana wins it by three. She's bourbon on ice, second BC Choo Choo and lent me 20. On the board, the unofficial winner, number one, Indieta. Number six, she's Bourbon on ice second. There is a photo for third, hold all tickets. As well, the stewards have posted the inquiry sign. They are reviewing the stretch drive of this sixth race. One six and a photo and a stewards inquiry. In the photo for third, number eight, BC Choo Choo is third. Number five, Lent Me 20, fourth, one, six, eight, five on the board. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race six, number one, Indieta. She's owned by Dennis Tucker and Brian Albertson, trained by Cindy Krasner, assisted by Tracy McNeil. The winning rider for his third today, leading rider Amadeo Perez. Indieta is a three-year-old filly by Numani out of Alouetta. For NBC by Karen Bidniak. Please note the inquiry sign will be taken off the board. There will be no change. One, six, eight, five. The result is official.
On your TV monitors, you're seeing the point of the race that the stewards were reviewing. In particular, number six, she's bourbon on ice, closing on the outside. The stewards' decision, it did not affect the outcome of the race. One six exact, a $2 price was $29.30. One six eight two dollar try was eighty two forty. Twenty cent super twenty one dollars twenty seven cents. And the pick five, you do need five of five. Multiple winners. It returns two thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars and five cents. Final running time was one eighteen and fifty seven one hundredths. In the seventh and final event, scratch the one, Sir Barkley, scratch the seven, it's in command. Field is six now to go six and a half furlongs. Exactor try, Superfecta, Super High Five wagering. Super High Five has a carryover of $955. Post time, 19 minutes away at 5.01.
Okay, we're back here in the paddock. Time for the seventh and final live race on our Sunday afternoon program. What a great day we've had. Weather's been awesome. Horses are putting on a great show. And none better than Indiana, who won for Brian Albertson and Dennis Tucker, trainer Cindy Krasner, and Amadeo Perez got his third riding victory of the day on the three to five favorite Indiana who made no mistakes today and got the job done quite comfortably. Congratulations. All right, six four thousand dollar claimers. We've lost the one. Sir Barkley also scratched the seven. It's in command. We're down to field the six. We're going six and a half. If you look at number two, here is Value Max. Claimed out of uh, his final start last year, which was a winning one at the four thousand dollar level. Just defeated IBC and you and debatable. Be facing uh, open company for the first time. This is uh, there's horses in here that have won a lot of races throughout their careers. What do we got here? We got Ring of Kerry, Wise Market, and Quagmire have all won eight times. You got five for Patty Duro, and a ditch has won sixteen, albeit an eleven-year-old. You should win a lot. But but uh, Value Max probably going to sit in behind the speed. He's kind of not fast enough to go to the front, but Silvino Morales will have him in a good position. Silvino has been riding very well this year and last year too, but just uh, things are going really well for him, riding at 30%. Currently 9-2 to two on Value Max for Robin Sheena Maben. Three will be the veteran campaigner Aditya, 11 years young, still wants to play. Last three works have all been in a minute and change, signaling, yep, I'm not ready to retire. For Derek Harris and Pat Marini. It's been a real, uh, just a fun horse where they don't have to dig into their pockets. Not making a lot of money, but uh, get to visit the winner's circle a few times. Had two more last year as a 10-year-old. As a 9-year-old, he didn't miss the board, or he missed the board only twice, but had two wins and eight starts. He's looked sharp this spring. I like him. I think he's going to run a good race. He's your f lukewarm favorite at 5-2. to two. That's the three uh, Aditya with Antonio Reyes. Should be close to the pace. I wouldn't think he'd be too far out of it. Should be in a good striking position and uh, should be dangerous from there. Four will be Patty Dioro. Probably better suited to longer distances, but uh, you got to start somewhere. Our best wishes to Carl Lawson. I don't know if he'll be watching at home. He had a little uh, accident in the morning uh, with training. He was broke his hip, broke four ribs, and and he's not a young man. He's in his 80s, and uh, he's rebounded so well. And the tough old dude, Carl, and his partner, Gabriel Methusex, uh, who owns the horse, has stepped up to the plate and along with Robbie Henson, help, help and train the barn. And uh, Patty Dioro uh, would be a, a sentimental choice in here for Carl. But uh, I think a good race to get on track to go along next time would be just what the doctor ordered for Carl and Patty Dioro. Brian Boudram, single ride, Patty Dioro. Five will be Quagmire. Three-time winner last year. He's pretty tough when he gets the lead. He gets that little nose in front. He's not a big guy. He gets that little nose in front. He's hard to run by. He didn't get in front last time. He was settled in behind the speed. The pace was on. It was pretty fast. He just ran an even fifth. I think he'll be better today with less pace in the race. I know the connections will be delighted to see the scratch of the seven. It's in command who was going to really uh, blister on the head end. But Quagmire and Fraser Abley. Currently at 9-2. to two. Shouldn't be that kind of price. That's a good price if you can get it on Quagmire. Six is Ring of Carry. Good runner-up effort to more than Soul title last time. Took advantage of the fast fractions. Not going to get that kind of pace today. I think Karen, who's riding in top form as well, uh, will have this one a little closer to the pace today. 9-2 to two on Ring of Carry for the Hammer Racing Stable on Rob Henson. And number eight will be Wise Market. The BFA Holdings, Mark Cloutier. Good third against 62.50 runners last time. 
That was good by Putin and finding ways. Those are tougher. This is a significant drop for him, and uh, this is a lot easier assignment for him as well. Amadeo Perez, I'm sure, will have this horse close to the pace as well. He's looking for his fourth winner of the day. He was certainly mad. He didn't win any yesterday. He's won three of the six already. He's got a, certainly got a good chance to win this one. He's your five to two second choice. Good betting board in here. Two to one favorite, six to one long shot. It shows you all six runners are pretty competitive, and I know the, the boys will put on a good show here in the finale. Right, don't forget we race next Saturday and Sunday, June the 3rd and June the 4th. Two stakes races on Saturday. The Emerald Downs for Phillies and Mares, headed by Weeby 3, who won the last allowance race, and Celerity. Uh, and then the boys, you'll see Cascade Billy uh, soaring for the sun in the George Royal as the boys are in action going six and a half furlongs. The older horses and older mares get their first chance to run in stakes company. That's next Saturday, first race at 2 o'clock, both days, next Saturday and Sunday. Here's a look at our analyst selections on screen. Good luck in the finale. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you next Saturday. Horses on the track at Hastings. Race number seven as we close out our Sunday card. Scratch the one and the seven. Field of six to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor try, Superfecta, and Super High Five wagering. Super High Five has a carryover of $955. Post time, seven minutes away. Here's the field number two, Value Max, owned by Robin Sheena Maben, the riders Silvino Morales. Three, Adigia, owned by Charles Harris and Pat Marini, Antonio Reyes aboard. Four, Patty Dioro, owned by Gabriel Mathuzic, the rider is Brian Budramsing. Five, Quagmire, owned by Lori Henson, Helen Climes, and Sharon Pring, apprentice Fraser Abley to ride. Six, Ring of Kerry. Owned by the Hammer Racing Stable, the rider is Kiron Kelawan. And the eight wise market, owned by BFA Holdings, the rider is Amadeo Perez. Six minutes to post time. Don't forget, live racing continues next weekend, Saturday and Sunday. First races, both days, 2 p.m. Now for the final time today, let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. A field of six here to wrap up the Sunday card. It's a very hard race to handicap. The toe board agrees as well. These horses are super honest. The youngest one in here is a four-year-old, but he has a very honest form. The rest are the old veteran campaigners in here. I went to the three, Adigia, the 11-year-old making his 2023 debut. Has some really nice works coming into this race finished last week's uh, five furlongs in a minute. He's well prepped coming into here. He looks good. He's happy out there on post parade. Number five, Quagmire. Got that race under his belt. There's a lot of speed that race. If he's able to get a little closer to the front end and relax better, he should have a more true to form race here today. Rounding out my top three is Ring of Carry, number six. Really liked the style last time. Kieran Kellowan knows his horse. Got him covered up and let him run into the dirt a little bit to have a strong closing effort. Look for him to uh, run very well late in here as well. I went three, five, six. But the tote board agrees that this is a pretty wide open race. So best of luck. Choose wisely. And we'll see you back for some stake action next Saturday. First post, 2 p.m.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Starting it now for the nightcap as we wrap up our Sunday card. Value Max to the inside gate. Veteran campaigner at Didja comes forward. Quagmire has been loaded. Ring of Carry, Wise Market, and Patty Dioro. Six in. They're at the post. There they go. 
Spike Meyer put on the early lead. Here's Wise Market emerging on the outside. A Digi gets away in third, followed by Ring of Kerry in fourth. Two lengths back is Patty Dioro. Value Max is the trailer. Paired off now as they go under the line for the first time. Quagmire with the lead. Quagmire leads it from the rail by a head. Wise Market second by two. From the outside, Ring of Kerry from the rail. It's a Digi. Two and a half for the back, Patty Dioro. And Value Max, the trailer. Opening quarter in 22 and 4 as they head down the box stretch with Quagmire from the rail by a nose. Right there, Wise Market second by two. Adigia stocking trip in third. Ring of carries on the outside, only two off it in fourth. Two and a half for the back, Patty Dioro and Value Max. Quarter mile from home, the half 46 and 1. And still head and head on the inside, Quagmire on the outside, Wise Market. Ring of Kerry and a Digi race together as they turn for home. It is Quagmire from the rail by a nose. Wise Market right there on the outside and now takes away the lead. It's Wise Market, Quagmire, a Digi and Ring of Kerry. Wise Market. Perez with four today. Quagmire second, a Digi third, Ring of Kerry fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number eight, Wise Market. Number five, Quagmire second. Three, Adigia was third. Six, Ring of Kerry fourth for the super high five. And number two, Value Max was fifth. Eight, five, three, six, two. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race seven, number eight, Wise Market. He's owned by BFA Holdings, trained by Mark Cluche, and aboard for his fourth winning ride, Amadeo Perez. Wise Market, an eight-year-old horse by Mass Market out of Fuchsia Gold. Bred in BC by Suzanne Anderson.
The result is official. The super high five, 20 cent price was $28.77. Pick four, you need four of four, $95.59. $2 try was $49.60. 20 cent super, $10.56. Late double, one and eight return, twelve ninety. And the pick three, you need three of three, eighty one fifty. Final running time, one seventeen and twenty four one hundredths. That'll wrap up our Sunday card here at Hastings. Don't forget, live racing does resume here this coming weekend, Saturday and Sunday. First race is both days at 2 p.m. Simulcasting remains here at Hastings. It was a claim in that seventh race, number six, Ring of Kerry. Claimed by the Sasquatch Stables. Trainer, Greg Benin. Simulcasting remains until 8 o'clock here. Don't forget our gaming floor is open. Thank you for watching and wagering on Hastings Racecourse. Drive safely. See you soon. Good night.
we're at the post. There they go. Monty from the outside, quick and on the early lead, make it or break it. Gets away in second. At the rail is Gwen in third. IBC and you, an early trailer is debatable. Under the line, Monty is torn off and opened up a six or seven length lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and it's Monty, well clear of the field. In second at the rail is Gwen, make it or break it on the outside third. IBC and you sits in fourth, and four back, debatable. That opening quarter was ripped off in 21 flat. As they head down the back stretch, Monty with the lead now by about seven or eight. Make it or break it, closest pursuer, Gwen at the rail third, IBC and you fourth. Then it's debatable in fifth, he's about 12 off the lead. As they race into the far turn, the half, 44 and four, and now a quarter mile from home, and Monty with the lead, but it is shrinking. Make it or break it, closing ground. Then on the outside now is IBC and you. As they turn for home, Monty is gone. It's make it or break it with the lead. IBC and you ranging up on the outside. Debatable is third, and try to close ground. Make it or break it, IBC and you, and debatable, make it or break it to win it. IBC and you second, debatable third, followed by Gwen and Monty. There they go. They've all come away well from the center. Rolly Spirit from the rail. Remember the Alamo. Then in between them, there goes my hero. Three lengths back is Atomic Hayes. On his inside now comes Championsa. Barney Google the trailer, and he's nine off the lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Remember the Alamo from the rail. Leads it now by a little over a length. It is, there goes my hero sitting in second. Rolly Spirit on the outside, two and a half off the lead. Break of three now to Championsa, Atomic Hayes, and Barney Google. Opening quarter in just 23 flat. Midway on the box stretch now, three furlongs to run. And remember the Alamo with the lead. On the outside now is Rolly Spirit. Moving through between runners, there goes my hero. The half, 47 flat, quarter mile to home. Remember the Alamo. On the outside, Rolly Spirit in between them. There goes my hero. Now Barney Google is starting to close ground. As they turn for home, remember the Alamo with the lead. Rolly Spirit, Barney Google, far outside. Then it's there goes my hero. Deep stretch, Barney Google strikes the front. And Barney Google will win it by two and a half. Tight photo for second. Remember the Alamo and Rolly Spirit. There goes my hero, fourth. There they go. Tam Tricky, straight and true and on the early lead. Down on the inside is Ducks on the Pond, Island Living. And from the outside now, no people. Early trailer, stop shopping Shelley. 
under the line it's Tam Tricky with the lead now by a tight length down on the inside saving ground is Island Living up on the outside now as they go to the clubhouse turn is no people then there's a break of five back to Ducks on the Pond and three and a half to stop Shop and Shelley. Opening quarter in just 23 and one. As they head down the box stretch, it's Tam Tricky with the lead by a little over a length. No people from the outside, second by a head. Island Living at the rail in third by three. Then it's back to Ducks on the Pond and stop Shop and Shelley, 11 off the lead. Quarter mile from home, the half, 46 and four. And it is Tam Tricky going along now with a two-length lead. Island Living, no people. Ducks on the pond and stop Shop and Shelley. Eighth of a mile from home, Tam Tricky leads it by two and a half. And down the lane they come. Tam Tricky by two, no people second. Far outside, Ducks on the pond. Tam Tricky wins it in the clear. No people second. Ducks on the pond third, Island Living in. Stop shopping Shelley. There they go. Closely bunched from the outside. Dawn with the win from the rail. Avs in command. It's McMurphy who gets a good spot in third. Gorky Park, appellant, is your lead trailer. Rounding the far turn, and it is from the rail. Avs in command by a head. Dawn with the win, second now by two and a half. Going along in third, it's McMurphy. Two lengths for the back is Gorky Park. And appellant, the trailer, eight off the lead. Opening quarter, a sensible 24 and one. Through the stretch for the first time. Avs in command from the rail by a head. Pressing on the outside, Dawn with the win. Two lengths further back now is McMurphy. On the outside, Gorky Park, he's got about three and a half to make up. Appellant is the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Avs in command. Still with a short lead. Up on the outside, Dawn with the win, the half 48 and two. It is McMurphy at the rail, patiently ridden in third. Gorky Park is now called upon in fourth, and appellant the trailer. Midway on the back stretch, and Avs in command with the lead. Three eighths from home by a length. Dawn with the win, second by two. Gorky Park roused in third. Appellant splits runners, and McMurphy now shuffled back to last. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs, 113 and one. Avs in command, Dawn with the win. Gorky Park, Appellant is now moving through, and Appellant has taken the lead. As they turn for home, Appellant leads it now by a length and a half. Gorky Park in second, McMurphy is third, Don with the win, fourth. Deep stretch now, it's Appellant by two, and Appellant is striding away by three. It's Appellant to win it in the clear. Gorky Park second, McMurphy is third, and Don with the win, fourth. There they go. Bold Arch broke out a little outward. Sir Bregovic put on the early late slews back right there. Foreign protocol at the rail. Then it's back to Smart Lad, Bold Arch, and Florida Gator. Under the line for the first time. Sir Bregovic from the outside by a neck. Down on the inside, foreign protocol. Bold Arch trying to press up on the outside. Smart Lad is fourth. Then slews back. 
Three further back, Florida Gator. Pass a half mile marker, they go. The opening quarter, 22 and one. Sensible opening quarter. And from the outside, Sir Bregovic from the inside, four in protocol. Bold Arch sits the stocking trip in third. Three lengths further back, Smart Lad. Slews back, and Florida Gator. Pass the five sixteenths, they go. Half was 45 and one. Four in protocol, Sir Bregovic. And now Bold Arch makes a line of three. Smart Lad is fourth. Florida Gators making up good ground and slews back. Eighth of a mile from home. And Sir Bregovic from between runners. But four in protocol not going away at the rail. And here comes on the outside Florida Gator. Florida Gator, Sir Bregovic, Smart Lad. Florida Gator with the lead. Florida Gator to win it. Smart Lad second, Sir Bregovic third. Four in protocol. Four. post. There they go. Indiana from the inside sent right off for the early late. Star Finality trying to keep pace with her. Up on the outside is BC Choo Choo followed by Lent Me 20. She's bourbon on ice and sweet as honey is the early trailer. Their noses apart on the inside Indiana on the outside Star Finality. Into the clubhouse turn they go and Indiana leads it now by a half. Star Finality, second by two. BC Choo Choo's on the outside of Lent Me 20. There's a big break now of about seven or eight. Back to She's Bourbon on Ice. And the trailer, Sweet as Honey. Opening quarter in 22 and one. Three eights to run. Indiana on the inside, Star Finality. Now BC Choo Choo trying to make a line of three. Sitting in behind them, Lent Me 20. Quarter mile from home, the half up, 46 and two. And Indiana has the lead. But it's BC Choo Choo, the danger on the outside. Let me 20s at the rail and star finality. As they turn for home, Indiana has the lead. And down the lane they come. Indiana leads it now by two and a half. BC Choo Choo at the rail. Let me 20. She's bourbon on ice. Closing but too late. Indiana wins it by three. She's bourbon on ice second. BC Choo Choo and let me 20. There they go. Quagmire put on the early lead. Here's Wise Market emerging on the outside. A Digi gets away in third, followed by Ring of Carry in fourth. Two lengths back is Patty Dioro. Value Max is the trailer. Paired off now as they go under the line for the first time. Quagmire with the lead. Quagmire leads it from the rail by a head. Wise Market second by two. From the outside, Ring of Carry from the rail. It's a Digi. Two and a half for the back, Patty Dioro, and Value Max, the trailer. Opening quarter in 22 and four, as they head down the back stretch with Quagmire from the rail by a nose. Right there, Wise Market, second by two. Adigia, stocking trip in third. Ring of carries on the outside, only two off it in fourth. Two and a half for the back, Patty Dioro, and Value Max. Quarter mile from home, the half, 46 and one. And still head and head on the inside, Quagmire on the outside, Wise Market. 
bringing up Carrie and uh, did you race together as a turn for home it is Quagmire from the rail by a nose wise market right there on the outside and now takes away the lead it's wise market Quagmire a did you and ring of carry wise market Perez with four today Quagmire second a did you third ring of carry fourth